Okay, so today I'm gonna show you the finally finished uh, sump that uh, is mainly including the um, the cabling and my box, which hopefully is going to save me one day a good few hundreds of pounds. Okay, so let me start from the uh, generator. So this is my generator and this is where my main, uh, well, the secondary power supply comes from, okay? Now it's connected to the, the I mean, when I bought the generator, it came with the, uh, like an auto start. So you had, so you had a button uh, where the start is. I don't know whether you can see this. So there was a button. So once you turn this, uh, there's a battery switch on, you press the button and the generator kicks in automatically. Now there is this, um, this uh, string on the side. So if for any reason, if the, let's say the battery is gone, you can still manually start it, okay? So, I've connected that to this little box in here, okay? Now, now let me explain you that box. So again, as a precaution, so what, what, what's gonna happen if that generator doesn't start, okay? So then I've got another generator, which is the manual one, and that socket here is for that generator, okay? So for any reason, if I'm around or if not even, I'm not around, but someone in the office, uh, they will be able to take this uh, lead, which is already uh, pre-made and is ready for action, okay? Plug that into that socket, plug that into the uh, secondary generator, which needs to be brought outside. And also on that box, uh, let me just move closer and on that box you're gonna have to turn that to the secondary generator now it might just look complicated but there's nothing else like cutting off the power supply from the sec from the um, uh, the first generator this is just to prevent any voltage going back to the um, to the first generator and uh, causing any problem. Uh, it might not cause any problem, but again, I'll just um, better be safe than sorry. So that's what we that's what we've got in here. So as the primary generator, uh, we're gonna keep it that position. Okay. Now we are going to go to to the panel. Now from outside, from outside, there is nothing really to show except that a little monitor okay now that little monitor it shows us let me make sure that this is actually in focus so that actually shows us the the current wattage uh, how many kilowatt hours I've used since the setup the setup of that box uh, the voltage and the current ampage okay so this is it. There's a little ventilation for the box. And now let's go to the wiring on the side. So if we go on this side here, we have our wiring. Now on top in here, I've got all the connections for the pumps, schemers, UV lights, and you know things like that uh, my power supplies the transformers here they're nicely um, exposed uh, 
very good airflow so they won't be overheating because they do get uh, they do get warm if they're in a crowded sealed spaces and just below now bunch this bunch of the cables that's the uh, that's my uh, heaters uh, I purposely didn't tight them up because it's just much easier uh, to move them around and clean them if they uh, if they lose so obviously the main bunch is all tied up and everything over there is nice nicely cable tight so it's it's not all over the place I'm pretty sure some of you would do a better job but this is good for me um, so yeah so that's that's what we've got in here let me just show you the heaters as well so as you can see I keep them all in here I've got currently eight heaters here not like I need the eight heaters but I've, I think I've got three set up to 26 degree or just under 26 the rest is set up to 25 because I've noticed as the, my office where I keep the sump is getting colder and the temperature drops to 25 obviously three heaters can't really um, fight that temperature so as it goes to 25 the other heaters will kick in so that's a sort of backup plan that's my um, calcium reactor um, that's the uh, this one here, that's the Rovafos, uh, obviously schemer, and uh, and in here it's a very tiny, but it's still uh, the carbon reactor, and I've got this tiny pump over there, which runs the the, the carbon reactor and also, sorry for my focus, One second. Uh, so that that pump runs a carbon reactor and the rover force at the moment. So uh, So yes, and and over here. I've got the six um, six uh, Filter socks, so that's it in here. So let's move to uh, Let's move to the beautiful panel So let me open that up okay so this is it and let me just get some light here okay so what we got in here so we've got the first three rows we've got the sockets and the sockets are for well everything what I've got connected uh, every um, every plug has a 3 amp uh, fuse so we can't really get any lower than that uh, but most of these devices, they they are they going to be pulling less than one amp. So, but yes, this is the smallest we can get. And some of them uh, are actually the power supplies where I had to extend the cables. So, um, so you can see. I mean, the, the people who know a little bit of uh, electrics, they they know that the amount of uh, the current going through those cables are very little. Uh, this is my uh, refugium light with a very simple timer. Uh, it works the best out of all this fancy stuff, I think. Uh, at least the most reliable. Then we've got uh, my two main pumps and the UPS. That UPS, which is in here, okay, this one, um, that only powers the timer which switches on the generator and the power the, the the timer is this one here let me see if I can focus on this okay so you see those two with uh, two blue rotary dials okay uh, m8 and m6 so these are powered by the UPS and they send in signal on and off signal to the generator to either come on or come off okay and then the rest is the well the fun stuff so you've got some 
contactors, I won't be uh, going through them at the moment, but I will explain everything on the wiring diagram, which I'm going to, well, correct, because I've done some changes. But then, yeah, so this is, as you can see, that's our main switch. We've got a neutral block, uh, the life block, obviously earth. This, there's a multi blocks in here for the connections from the generator. Um, and there is a on and off for the generator as well. And uh, then we've got this. Let me just go lower. So we've got this and this is Okay, and this is uh, th these are my heaters. Okay, so what I did is um, instead of plugging each heater into each socket, I run five heaters into one breaker, and five another five heaters into the second breaker, and those five heaters goes through each meter. So at the moment, it shows me that on the left hand side. I've got 800 watts working and on the right hand side I've got 300 watts. That tells me that most likely I've got two heaters on on the left and one heater on on the right. Okay, because my heaters are usually 400 watts. I've got one or two smaller, that's why I think the one small one is working on the right hand side and on the left I've got two large ones working. Okay, and it tells me that it's pulling uh, 3.4 amp on one side and 1.2 amp on the other side um, so as you can see my breaker here is a 10 amp i don't know what would have to happen to actually uh for the for the uh, for the breaker to, to actually goes off the uh the heater cable which runs all the way to the uh to the heater that's got additional fuse uh, the, each heater is going to pull about 1.8 amp, if I remember rightly. Uh, so, so yeah. So even if the heater goes, uh, it's going to pull the the fuse along the line. So I don't think so. The, these breakers here are really uh, acting as an isolator rather than than the breaker. But nevertheless, if anything goes uh, wrong, then it will it will go down. So so the rest will be protected okay so yeah that's it so you know it's as, as simple as that and um, let me let me move back so so yes this is it and let's uh, let's go and let's uh, have fun with uh, with uh, shutting the power down and see what happened all right Okay, so quick explanation of what each camera represents. So let's call the camera one, and that represents the power generator. The second camera represents an overview of the setup. The next camera, camera three, represents the automation setup inside of the uh, electrical panel. The camera four represents the, the amp meter or the watts meter in front of the main electrical panel. The camera five is pointing at the refugium, which is currently on. The camera six shows all the controllers for the pumps and calcium reactor and so on. The camera seven represents the side of the sump and the water level. And the camera eight shows the water flow coming from the aquarium into the sump and it's overflowing onto the filter socks. Okay, so that should explain all these little uh, pictures. And I suggest to watch this on the bigger screen. It will be much clearer for everyone. Okay, so everything is set up now. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to 
go now to my fuse box and I'm gonna turn the power supply off and that's gonna happen right now now we are waiting the timer is going to kick in the generator everything is off for the main contactor to go in and turn the power on to the aquarium. as simple as that. Everything is back online. Now the water level is high but it slowly will be uh, settling down and yeah this is it. <laughs>